Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you days one through four of the hashtag ATCAD2019 which is Artist Trading Card A Day 2019. This is a, a art challenge offered by our Art Joy of Sharing Art Community Group on Facebook and it's basically just make an ATC every day and post it um, in the group and in anywhere else you want on social media using the hashtag. So my first uh, day one ATC, I have some mixed media paper that is cut into three and a half by two and a half inches, which is the size of an artist trading card. That is the same size as a um, baseball card, Pokemon card, Yu-Gi-Oh card, those type of trading cards. It's the same thing. It's a little card that you could trade if you wanted to. Um, we're not actually doing a trade or a swap in the group. This is just a, a incentive for you to, to do some art and post it in the group to share and get yourself going for the summer of art. So I have a lot of scraps on my desk. I have every kind of scrap you could ever imagine on my desk. I have little bins of them, a small one and a larger one that sits down uh, by my feet under the desk. And I'm just using little bits and bobs and pieces and parts that I found that coordinate with each other. Um, there's a little bits of map, there's some die cut, there's a gold doily piece, and then there's a piece that's from a gel print that was made by a stencil. And I just glued all those different things. They're kind of color coordinated, I glued them all on the card <clears throat> using some Liquitex, Liquitex matte gel medium and then uh, the top piece has kind of a rose flower on it so I drew around kind of in a scribbly not very serious way with my black Posca pen and then I did the same I went around some of the sections with a Stabilo All pencil which is a highly water reactive pencil and I blended that out with a Pintel water tank brush. And then I used some Distress Crayons. These are a soft water soluble pigment in a little stick to add a little bit of pink and some green. I drew in leaves. I don't think flowers should be stuck on there without leaves. So I drew those in as well and added some green to them. Then to finish it off, I just found a sticker from the Tim Holtz sticker pack that has a nice saying on it. It says, uh, gratitude turns what we have into enough. And that was the end of day one. And there's the card for you. <laughs> it turned out cute, a little bit of a collage. So day two was using napkin scraps and a little scrap of tissue paper that I got inside um, a package. Just these are things that are in a bin next to my desk, under my desk, by my feet. And I just grabbed them out because they seemed interesting to me for that particular day. So I've got a different glue. This one is from DecoArt and it's the Napkin Decapage glue. Um, it has some interesting properties. It's kind of, it, when it, when it dries, you know, napkins and thin paper like tissue are annoying in collage because they want to buckle up. They want to tear. Most glues make them too wet. But if you try to use like a, a gel glue like I use on my other papers, then it doesn't stick down flat. This particular glue from DecoArt has something in it that makes it stretch the napkin flat when it's drying. I don't know if it's like maybe a, a shrinking agent or a I don't know, but somehow it works, it works really well. So I use that when I do really thin papers like napkin and tissue. So I wanted to put this little bit of napkin with the, flat, the butterflies on it, but I knew that there would be too much of that pattern shining through. So I used some white gesso with my finger and put that on underneath the area that I knew the butterfly napkin was going to go over because I was going to lay it over the top and I wanted it to be white underneath instead of those random patterns. So then I, I stuck down the butterfly napkin and gave that a good dry with my heat tool to make sure it's it's nice and dry before I start doing anything to it. 
I get out my Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons and I'm taking the olive one and going around kind of blending that olive tone from the top down to the bottom because the bottom was much lighter. I don't want to obliterate everything. I just want to give like a little bit of extra color to make the butterfly stand out from the background. For the second butterfly, I used a sienna color, which is similar to the color of the printing on the tissue paper. And then I used a Van Dyke brown over the, the top area and around the edges a little bit and just added some extra color to the card um, to make those butterflies be the focal image that you see. Then I took my white Posca pen, that's an acrylic paint pen, and this is the fine tip one, and just kind of added some highlights around the lines of the butterflies to make them stand out even more. Um, this really helps them be the focal part. And then I splattered a little bit with that same pen. I like splatters. I glued this one, I trimmed it down a little bit and <coughs> glued it to a olive green cardstock to give it a border. I like to do that lots of times on different things like tags and, and artist trading cards. I like having borders around things. Definitely cards that you mail. I always have a border around my layers on those. So that's probably where it comes from. Then just uh, to finish it off, I added some words. This is from a digital download from Gina B. Aaron's Etsy shop. Um, all the, the links to all the things that I'm using will be in the description box below the video. So you can find this sticker pack, which you can print out on stickers. Um, at the time I printed it, I didn't have the right size stickers. So I just printed it on paper and I cut it out and stuck it on there. So that's day two. I also added a little bit of glitter um, with the Nouveau Drops. I'm not sure if that showed up in the video. I don't really know what happened. So for day three... I have this box of stamped images on tissue paper. They've been stamped with archival ink on tissue paper. And at times I've done swaps of um, stamped images with other people so that I get images that I don't personally have in the stamps. Um, it's a great way to, to be able to use stamps that you don't own. So that's what I'm using for day three. This is still the mixed media paper cut into three and a half by two and a half inch card. And I'm using that same napkin tissue collage to um, collage this onto my card. And there was an area there that I wanted to move out of the way. So I just used the edge of my scissors and just kind of let it tear away because um, once the tissue paper is wet, you can tear it and it's not that big a deal. So then, I let that dry with my heat tool and started to add some some watery background color using my Neo Color 2 crayons. These are a professional product. They have very, very high pigment load and they're very um, easy to move and blend with water or even um, you can do it a little bit of with like a wet finger if you just dip your water your <laughs> If you dip your water in your finger, no, that's not what I meant. If you dip your finger in your water, you can kind of blend it that way too. I like to use these water tank brushes. You see on the screen, I have two different brands. Uh, one of them is Pentel and the other one is Arteza. And they basically just have water inside the barrel. So you don't have to keep dipping your water, your brush into the water. You could do that too. You don't have to have water tank brushes to do this. So just really a handy thing. I use them all the time for so many things. So then I decided that the stamping wasn't dark enough and I wanted it to be more black. So I went over it with a Posca pin. <coughs> but what I didn't think about was that the card was still wet. So the Posca pin did bleed a little bit, but I didn't really mind. I thought it looked interesting anyway. Um, and then I went back over that with a little bit of the brown crayon and some white Posca pin to give it highlights because I kind of had obliterated all the, the scratchiness that was on the stamped image. So then I came back to this later and realized that the stamped image now looked pale in comparison to the tree that I had darkened up. So then, of course, I had to take a pen and go over the lines 
of the stamped image as well. And I used a Fabric Castell pit pin that is a India ink pin that I use often for illustration. And I use the extra small little tip and went over the lines, most of the lines of the stamped bird with a crown. And I still needed to color that. So I got out some Spectrum Noir alcohol markers and through this process realized that my color chart that I've made of all my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers is now faded by the sun and the colors are no longer true. <laughs> because I thought that this, these two reds that I got out, I thought they were more of a coral because they look like coral on my chart and they ended up being very dark red. So, you know, got to go over my chart again and maybe put it somewhere where it doesn't get a lot of sun <laughs> because it's definitely faded. I, I didn't realize that alcohol markers fade that much. I, I thought they were a permanent product and I wasn't worried about them being out. I just have them set next to the stack of the markers, which are in like a holder. And I guess it's just getting way too much sun. So you can see when I go over those, how different the color is in comparison to what was on the chart. Dang it. <laughs> I just get a little bit frustrated with these markers. I have to have a chart because the colors on the markers themselves aren't true. And then when I go to use my chart, it's not the right colors. So I use some reds and then I use some browns. Um, kind of uh, softer browns to color the wing. Then I used a yellow for the crown and um, some orange for the, the feet and the beak. Then I came back in with a white Posca pin again and, because now I had that white Posca pin scratchy looking highlights. So I decided to add some of those to the bird too to make everything on the card balance out. You know, if you do something to one thing, you got to do it in another area on the card to make everything make sense to the viewer. So then I have this, this little die cut um, piece that says hello. I think I got that in Happy Mail maybe. Um, or maybe I actually own that die cut. I'm not sure. <laughs> I might own it maybe. I think I do actually. And it was uh, cut out of white cardstock. I wanted to change the color of it. So I grabbed that same red marker and um, went over it with the fat tip of the marker just to color it into red so that it um, stood out from the card and also matched the little birdie on the card. And I glued that on with a glue stick and then I glued this whole card onto a black cardstock um, backing. I also, uh, we don't talk about this very often, but I have some printouts from the computer that I've made that have my name and stuff on them. Also over in the group Art Joy of Sharing, which is where you can find this challenge, is a downloadable PDF that you can print and it has lines on it for you to fill out, to sign your name and to fill out as this number four of 30 to fill out the date, to um, put, you know, any type of contact information you might want. Um, that's something you can download the PDF in the group and print it out and use that if you want to. It was offered by Peg Robinson, my partner, who um, I do that group with. So <laughs> she's the one who made it, I think. And it's nice to have those on the back if you want to send them to someone or to trade them with someone, which a lot of people trade these in, in different art communities. So day four, I had been doing some uh, gel printing and I printed out a sheet of little cards with this particular stencil from Stencil Girl. It is designed for ATCs. So it has nine ATC designs on it. And I had used, used a large gel print and printed all nine of them at one time. Um, you could also cut these apart and use them individually. And I thought about doing that, but then I just ended up printing a whole sheet instead and cutting them apart after the fact. So then I used the, the stencil back over the design and went around and added a little bit of uh, Stabilo All Black Pencil and kind of was trying to bring out the design of the sun and the, the tree over the sun. Um, 
with the black because I thought it didn't stand out very much from my gel printing. It's, it seemed to be very pale. It didn't really do what I wanted. And it it's not, this particular one is not a generalized background. Like a few of them on there are, they're just kind of lines and squiggles and stuff. But this one's definitely a picture. So you want it to, to come out from the background and show itself. So that's why I added that black Stabilo pencil and I was blending it. And then I thought, you know what? It needs more color. It's, it's too pale too pale. So I got out this set of um, watercolors. This one's made by Sakura. Um, link in the description box below to this particular set so you can find it. It's, it's a great set of watercolors. It's very intensely pigmented and easy to just throw in your your bag as you're traveling. It's a great way to bring some color along as you're traveling. All you need is a little water brush and it actually comes with one. <laughs> it comes with a water tank brush, which obviously it's not in there anymore, but um, who knows? It's probably in the, the jar of uh, water tank brushes that I have. But I used it. I did spray the pan a little bit with a, a mist to get the colors activating and then just use my water tank brush to color in and add more interesting color to the um, the sunshine and the, the tree image. So yeah, it's from the stencil, but there's not a whole lot of uh, what I originally had from the stencil left. Obviously, you could use a stencil and go through the stencil and color everything, but since I gel printed it already, I already had the lines. So then I decided the background wasn't bright enough. Now that I had brightened up the tree and the sun, then the background looked pale and pitiful. So I used the same watercolors and went over the background as well to, um, I don't know, make everything more balanced and more interesting. First using a tealish color and then coming back in with a darker color around the sun and kind of a shadow type effect with a darker color. I think I blended a couple colors together because one was too intense, one was too dark, and one and I wanted a, you know it to, I wanted to coordinate with that teal color. So you can always blend. There's a blending tray that comes in the set, and that it makes it very handy. <laughs> it makes everything very handy. And when you're when you're done, you've you've made a mess of your blending tray. You can just rinse it off because it's watercolor. So this is a very useful little set. I recommend it probably the one I use the most of any of the watercolors that I have. And I have quite a few different ones. Of course, I don't have the super expensive, you know, Snellier or whatever and all those. I don't have those. So I wished I did, but they're expensive. I went around the edges of the card to create a border using a archival pad. And then I had this uh, little bottle of Bria Reese glitter ink. And this is the gold one. And it's very glittery. It's way more glittery than you would think in that little bottle. So I just put a drop onto my palette and picked it up and went over my sunshine with that glitter ink. And then I also splattered it. I just picked it up with the brush and just flicked it over it and made some, some gold, shiny, uh, glittery splatters. It turned out pretty cool. I also put a sticker on there from that same Tim Holtz pad of stickers. And that was it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There'll be uh, ATC every day on my Instagram and in the, the Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group. And then I'll be making these compilation videos of the processes. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you can share this. And of course, if this is your last video for the day, uh, I would appreciate it if you clicked on late night or something before you left YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye. <music>